lot of explanation of the technology. We looked at this as the planet Earth and its magnetic fields. Let's just consider the same thing as a plasma in the center of a hydrogen atom, a proton. Before a proton, there is always a neutron because by law of physics, there cannot be a position when there is a proton and no electron. So, for the first time, we call the uh, decay of fundamental, initial fundamental plasma, neutron, that is splits into electron and proton. So, the decay of the, uh, the plasma into neutron and proton brings into play totally different game, totally different understanding in the world of physics. What it is, let's consider the initial plasma. As an initial plasma, as we explained before, there is a matter which we see, we tangibly we feel it. So that part of the matter is very simple. We see as matter, as we explained just previously, for it to be tangible, it has to possess magnetic field and it has to possess gravitational fields. So that is the three fields which you are looking for. But that's only the tangible side of the matter, of the plasma. As we know in the recent past, the plasma possesses antimatter. We call this antimatter, we show it with a stronger, much pronounced magnets. The reason being is that up to the present time, it's a belief by a number of nuclear physicists and theoretical physicists that when the matter and the antimatter come together, the matter, there is nothing left, some charges we see, and then because they are balanced with each other, the, char the balanced charges, the material disappears. This is against the law of physics, this is against anything we know in the world of physics. There is no chance that two real matters can come together and then when they interact and come together, there is nothing left. So, we have found out, we have developed technology, we have theoretically and scientifically proven that actually the antimatter is like the sun in the plasma condition. It's the center of the energy, it's the possessor of the main energy, magnetic field of the matter. That's why at the present, some institutes, they call, they have separated the antimatter and within a spoonful of this antimatter, they can launch several shuttles, the energy possessed by it, into space. And in the world of physics, we have never came to understand what the antimatter is. For the first time, again you explain, antimatter is the sun of the plasma, is the center of the plasma. The matter part we see is the tangible part, is the weakest part. But at the same time, in the structure of the matter, there is a fundamental point of the plasma, that is, the matter, the plasma, possesses dark matter too. Which means, we have, within the plasma, its main constituent, which is antimatter, the matter, and the dark matter. And because the way this material is produced, this plasma is produced, each one has its own magnetosphere condition, each one has its gravitational condition, each one has its own magnetic field condition, each one has its own mass. So, in fact, mass of a plasma is collection of the masses of the matter, antimatter and dark matter. And in reality, the way the plasma comes to be made in the universe, when they come together, they attract other magnetic fields which are loose within that within the environment. Those loose magnetic fields which are not similar in the strength, they tend to be dynamically rotating within the center of their plasma. We call this one F1. We call it this uh, a torus field. In the dream physics, they call it the wormhole. This is actually a magnetic field because it does not have any other matching fields within it to create its own mass, to create its own gravitational field. These loose magnetic fields rotate within the center. And at the same time, there are some other fields which are not actually part of the matter, 
because they are loose, they don't match in any shape or form. So what happened in reality, they are just loose fields within the plasma. What happened, these plasmas, like the plasma of the antimatter, when it comes close to the torus field, it gains acceleration, it gains energy from it because it's a dynamic. The same happens with the antimatter and the same happens with the matter component of plasma. In the book we explained what the dark matter is and what dark matters are and how dark matters are created. In a very simple way we explain dark matter is actually a matter where its magnetic fields are literally in balance with the magnetic field environment of the plasma. So, as the strength of the magnetic fields are the same, they don't create any light in the interaction with each other. We explain the creation of light further on, then it will become much clearer what it means. So, in fact, if we change the condition of the plasma or the environment of the plasma, we'll find the dark matter becomes visible matter because only the magnetic field the strength of the plasma has changed. In the world of physics they call appearance of the matter out of nothing virtual particles. There is no virtuality, it's actually matter, but because its magnetic field or its magnetosphere is in balance in magnetic field strength with the environment of the plasma, the matter does not create any light. That's why it appears as dark. So in reality, what we have, this is the structure of what we call initial fundamental plasma. It's called the neutron. And that's what the structure of the plasma is. That's why suddenly scientists see amazing antimatter. Antimatter, there's nothing anti about it. In fact, it's the most fundamental matter part of the plasma. And when you say matter collides or gets absorbed or come into touch with antimatter, nothing left. This is a fallacy. It's like saying the earth hits the sun and there is nothing left of the sun and the earth. There is no such a thing. What is left, the matter gets absorbed into the antimatter magnetic field of strength. There are still different strengths. And what you see, the light which comes out is like when the earth hits the surface of the sun, it gets some splash of radiation. And that's what it is. And that's because the magnetosphere, magnetic field of the earth, uh, matter, comes in touch with the magnetosphere of the antimatter. And when two plasmas come together, the field interaction creates what we know as light. Different wavelength. So for the first time we explain, you do not need, and at the same time in the further talk we will explain, that the light is created in the universe out of when the two fields come too close to each other, when the magnetic fields of them interact, some magnetic fields are released in the wavelength of the light. So we'll explain that in the future, in the, in, in the very soon chapters. That's what it is. This we call the structure of initial fundamental plasma. Some people call it neutrons. But when this neutron decays, we, I call it a decay because it's a natural fundamental decay like uranium, plutonium and everything else when they decay, any other material, plasma of neutron decays and the outcome of the decay is plasma of the proton and for the first time we introduce the plasma of a neutron, uh, of an electron and that is a very fundamental and that's a major breakthrough to understand the structure of the proton. We will speak about the decay in the following chapter.